The FAA has banned U.S. flights to Haiti after three planes were hit by gunfire over Port-au-Prince this week. At the center of the chaos in Haiti's capital is the leader of a deadly group of gangs. After a visit from an American missionary, that gang leader is now pledging to protect orphanages and Christian workers. CBN's Chuck Holton has this exclusive report. Port-au-Prince feels like a war zone. Gangs control the majority of the city and want more. Even so, missionary Victor Marx is still investing in ways to ease the suffering. The reason I'm here in Haiti doing all this high-risk missionary stuff is a while back we responded to the urgent request of a, an orphanage that was under imminent threat of attack by many considered the most notorious gang in Haiti, the Moazza 400. It broke my heart to think of the possibilities were in this gang attack to take control over that area. While the orphanage was saved, a desperate population remains. Some say gang leader Jimmy Barbecue Cherizier is Haiti's most dangerous man. He faces sanctions from the U.S. and the United Nations. Entering his territory uninvited is all but suicidal. Yet when he offered an interview, Marx and his team quickly accepted. Cherizier led us deep into his stronghold, a slum few outsiders dare to enter. Casting himself as a defender of the poor fighting corrupt elites, he dismissed the U.N.'s $600 million peacekeeping mission. Okay, he said, he said there's no force coming from abroad, whether it's the Kenyans, Jamaicans, Americans, whoever, that are going to change Haiti. But the Americans have proved that already with the oh, yeah. oh, yes. This is right in the center of one of the neighborhoods in Port-au-Prince that is a no-go zone even for the police. And you can see the evidence of the gunfights that have happened right here at this sports park in the middle of this neighborhood. But the people that live here say that it's not the gangs that they're afraid of, it's the government. I talk to people on the street, Islam's to wealthy. And I go, do you trust the government? They all say no. I mean, without reservation, no. So the government has its existing currently, and how it's been, uh, it doesn't work. While Cherizier's critics see him as a gangster, he insists he's fighting for Haiti's forgotten people. The real enemy isn't the gang, he says, but the elite families who've kept the nation in poverty for decades. That's why he, who's led this charge, this movement of the Viva Song, and he, Jimmy always says this, unless there's a dialogue, unless Haitians can come sit at the table, yeah. you know, he's forced the hand of everybody, the international community, the politicians, the really? works. they're going to have to sit with them yes. or nothing's going to change. Despite the overall portrayal of Cherizier, Marx sees a man on a mission. He's truly fighting for reformation and some level of better equality, at least of opportunity. And he doesn't make himself out to be a saint, but yet, you know, prayed with him. We got to pray with him. Here he is. Hard for vision. Pray you fill him with your spirit, God. Give him eyes and heart. Increases capacity for love. He said the only thing that can take Haiti out of its current crisis yeah. is dialogue. With the arrival of Kenyan troops as potential peacekeepers, many Haitians wonder if this new mission will bring real change or just more of the same. While it's clear what they have isn't working, Marx managed to come away with a promise. I'm publicly letting everyone know that I have agreed with Victor Max that no violence against children, orphanages, American missionaries, and any Asian that help them will be tolerated by Viv Assam. Marx and others concerned with the situation can only wait and see if that promise is fulfilled. From Port-au-Prince, I'm Chuck Holton for CBN News. Well, that's a story you won't see anywhere else where you, you go inside a gang leader, and what is he saying? He's saying, well, the only hope for Haiti is, is dialogue. Uh, as a Christian, uh, I'll politely disagree with it uh, on that. The only hope for Haiti is to turn wholeheartedly to Jesus and, and ask him to intervene on your behalf. Uh, you can dialogue all day, but if you don't have 
Jesus in the middle of that, you're, you're not going to be successful. Haiti is, is an illustration for the whole world. And, and you look at other countries that have gone into this, whether it was Somalia and Africa um, 100 years ago, the warlords who um, ran China into the ground. It, you, you, you look at it, and, and at the root of all of it was a, a population who no longer trusted their own government no longer believed that the police or the army were on their side, uh, thought that the elites were all corrupt and, and uh, padding their own pockets, had no concern for the average person. When, when, you, when you look at some of the things that have been said in American politics, were we on the brink of that? Uh, and are we still on the brink of that? And, and can we... Uh, come together as a people. Uh, unfortunately, in America today, when, when you say the government is going to intervene, most Americans head for the hills and say, well, no, they're, they're not going to help. And, and you have residents of, of North Carolina, where was FEMA? Uh, residents of Georgia, where was FEMA? Where, where were they in our time of need? Uh, can we come together as a people and realize the, the, uh, these things have happened throughout history, and, and the core of it is always when you lose trust in your own government. Here's some great news. We, the people of the United States, get to decide our government. We get to vote, and we get to vote repeatedly. Uh, let's keep doing that. Let's keep holding on to our dream that we can be one nation under God, indivisible, and especially with liberty and justice for 